Hello everybody, this is Rizaki Julio, I'm a fashion photographer in Tokyo, Japan and I wanted to show you guys what is my rig, what does it look like and why did I do it um, a couple of decisions that I took into getting this camera now this is a, a photo camera, <laughs> this is a I'm to take photos it's not a, a video camera or something else like that, it, it does look pretty hardcore now I, I have it, um, the base of it, as uh, many of you seen on my videos as, it's actually a Mamiya RC67 uh, Pro 2. There is the D version as well, but I, I'm, I'm okay with the Pro 2. And I have designed this this double grip on the bottom. I designed it on 3D on the computer and I got it machine made in a, in a place nearby here. And, uh, and I have this place over here to put, uh, there's a digital back in there and there is a trigger for the Pro Photo. And I have this custom viewfinder uh, for the more stronger uh, lenses. Now, uh, over here I can I can just like close it like that, and I can see through this loop on here, or I can open it and see the whole image because this loop is so strong that I would just be able to see a, a like a tiny little spot on the photo that I'm taking. But um, you put this thing over here. And you have this loop over here, and end up augmented up to 15x. So that's a pretty good thing. Now, using a digital back, uh, in this case, I'm using this 30, 33 millimeter, uh, 33 megapixel. Uh, it says Mamiya, but it's actually a, a Leaf Aptus 2 version of the of the digital back. Um, but it has the Mamiya branding because this this version was made for for the RC67 Pro 2D that came out but you, you can still use it with this camera the only thing that you're gonna need is <laughs> a lot of cables so as you can see over here I have a lot of cables like going and running around and um, I have a cable you have, you're supposed to have a cable from the lens from the, the trigger of the lens over here all the way back to the digital back but instead of doing that I what I actually did was put this um, there's a trigger over here that would, you know, you can just put any any flash over here, but you have to put it on the side of the camera, like that. And I used this thing and I connected a cable right there, and the cable is the one that runs into the digital back, and then uh, it goes all the way to this side of the digital back right here, and then from the other side of the digital back, from this side, it exits and it goes into the input of the Pro Photo. So I will be able to shoot with the Profoto. Now uh, at night time, all this camera is very manual. So over here you have the speed on this side, and <laughs> when it's dark in the studio, or whatever, I don't have much light. So I just I got the idea of doing this thing. I have a necklace over here, and I can put this out. And this is just a little chip. It's called a Cortana chip, and it's made by a prop designer. Uh, Dustin Wetsavi and I'm gonna put his link in the description of the video and he designed this thing that is looks like uh, one of those Halo uh, video games I don't know if you, you guys have seen it but it's it's really really nice really neat and it has lighting and stuff like that so um, I got one from him and then I decided to do a little bit of coding to change the the sequence of the lighting and I just slap it in here on this side of the of the camera and I have it running like this so yeah it would have a, a like a spinning thing and the reason why I got this um, the sequence like that I, I did a little bit of research on the uh, on the human brain and um, the human uh, brain when it's sleeping it has certain like frequency that goes in and out it's like a breeding kind of thing so um, I got a, 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 the sequence of a breeding so you can see it fades out and it fades in so when an adult human is actually sleeping it has this kind of this kind of sequence and it, suddenly it actually blinks or it spins or it, it, it kind of glitches a little bit just to just to kick out something so it kind of keeps you awake and aware but it's it's just settled there so it kind of gives it a, a little more of a live thing um, on this side over here uh, I have designed this viewfinder and I adapted it to a normal viewfinder of the Mia now this is the old school one the, the waist level viewfinder which you open like this and 
uh, I showed it in the other videos and you have the the big um, loop over here which it just gives you like a 1.5 magnification but it's not that much that's much I needed so I went ahead and I pretty much took up the whole top part and just be just got left with the bottom part like like, like this here and the hole so I'll be able to attach it to the camera and that's why it still says Mamiya right here because it it's from the old one so if I take this out over here and I can show you guys it's it's a design that I made and it would just attach into it now I have a magnets so over here and they just tape and when it closes it will actually seal so it doesn't fall out so and it has a little like grip for you to pull it out and you can see the loop in there it's pretty small but it's 15x this is the top part of it and I use some leather just to cover the light and this is the mechanism actually to move it so you unscrew this and you can just move it move the loop all around the place it's, it's a pretty simple thing but um, I think the hardest part was actually to find who can actually manage to make it for me um, these uh, bellow systems they're they're good if you have a long lens but uh, if you have a, like a wide angle lens you don't need this because the, the, this will cost a very big shadow on the actual screen now um, this screen over here behind this there is a mask that uh, sometimes comes uh, with the digital back now between the lens uh, the lens I mean the glass between the, the the mirror and the actual in focusing screen you have to put one of these things and you could probably get a focusing screen with this already on it but what this is, this is a mask right so this is the size of the photos um, cutting you know the edges to make it landscape or portrait and you have to put this on top so as you can see it actually loses a little bit of uh, space and it has some corners right there so this is actually designed to fit right there uh, and it tells you uh, how much uh, space you have left so as you can see on the on the edges of it if you're shooting portrait or if you're shooting landscape then you will be able to tell uh, what are the endings of your thing and it's kind of not intrusive so I like it it just fits really well on the actual uh, on the knobs I don't know if you can tell from there but there's a little dots there so there you go you just put it like that and it's just a plastic thing and then you put the the focusing screen on top and that's it it will seal and now you have a, a way to actually see the uh, I don't know if you can tell but you have a way to actually see the the edges of your of your photo in there for the digital back now if you have a different digital back then it means that you need uh, a different size because it will have a different size of sensor so the sensor is what matter the sensor size is what what determines the edges of this thing otherwise you have to like calculate it or make yourself one and um, they're not complicated to do I mean just take a picture and see and don't move the camera and see where is um, on the screen over here where is it end and where is it begins and you flip it uh, now the cool thing about this one is that I have the Pro 2 version but if you see on the back part of here it says Pro 2D on the on the plate down here now this doesn't come with the digital back uh, the digital back uh, is separated but this plate is actually made for uh, Mamiya type uh, contacts so if I unscrew this thing over here you see it has the connectors and it has the, the sensor of course and it has the pins over here and this is actually designed uh, you put it you lock it from the side instead of from the bottom like the the, the film backs so you unlock it like this and it's basically just this piece just like that it's not it's not a thing of the other world it's just something that will connect and it uses the pins of the camera and uh, the version of it, this thing I believe it said somewhere there is a, a specific number because not all the plates are actually made for for all the 
for all the bags like there is plates for these type of bags but they they don't move they don't spin or whatever so this is this is the one that I'm using it does cost like 800 or 900 dollars to get it and basically you set up this um, as you can see I don't know if you can tell but it's not set up uh, uh, sideways it's actually set up to portrait mode so you set it up to portrait mode and you place this thing sideways uh, like that and you lock it on this side and that will give you basically the space to put your digital backpack here and it allows you that specific uh, plate adapter plate it allows you to put it on R mode and actually spin the digital back so you can have a portrait mode with the digital back and this over here is the battery so you can spin it this way or spin it this way and you don't need to actually take it out remove it and put it back like it's very it's very good because if you're like in a sandy location or windy location you don't want dust to come into the digital back you don't need to take it out and put it back on because other adapter plates do that they don't move they don't turn around although even that you have this camera so you have to take out the, the digital back and then flip it and uh, some digital bags have a square format which is cool but uh, this one has like a, a perfect format because it's a basically the, the 7 by the 7 the 8 by 10 format so it gives you a good size of the image besides the 33 megapixels that it gave you now um, this thing over here it's designed in 3d uh, I took a lot of measurements of the camera and I designed this camera on a 3d model on the computer and uh, the bottom part of this thing um, to show it to you I'll probably have to like disassemble the whole thing and it's something that I do pretty often but uh, I have two openings over here one is to hold this uh, the grip it with the camera and the other one is for um, for the tripod so there's a tripod hole there and there's a little bigger one there so I do have to carry everything <laughs> Uh, to disassemble it and to reassemble it. Uh, this trigger over here, uh, I got the idea from Marcus Klinko, he's a celebrity fashion and fashion photographer, and he mentioned that uh, his camera, he's using also an, a Mami RC67, and he mentioned that he finds it very good to use this thing. So, yeah, I mean, I can totally see how uh, it's easier to maneuver the camera and just look for it from the top like right here and you trigger with this thing over here so that's pretty cool uh, once it's all set up you just shoot it like that and of course depending on your speed I'm gonna change the speed a little faster so you shoot it like this and obviously the, the automatic winder allows you to not do this winding thing but now if I turn the winder off, it has a it has an on and off button on this side on the bottom right here. So I switch it off. Now I can take the picture and I can do it manually. And I still have the the way to do it with, with while holding the camera with both hands. It's not that just it's not just that it gets heavy, but it actually uh, the cables they have a very uh, kind of sensitive contact. I'm gonna take out this cable over here. This is the trigger, the sync that should go from the lens to the digital back, but I have it another way. Now this thing over here, as you can see, it's um, it's a very little kind of thing. The other side is is better. It's a uh, kind of like a small headphone jacks, and um, but this one is the X sync now this one should go on the lens right so you got a cable from the lens to the digital back a lot of people says that, well that's not a big deal the problem is that when you're holding the camera the cable would be basically in your hand and you will be moving in and this thing is not is it's not really strong the, the one that goes into the lens so you really don't want to be touching this this cable uh, as much as you can so that's the reason was one of the reasons why I, I'm designing this double grip just so I don't have to to touch this thing now this this thing will attach actually on the lens on this part of the lens right here 
and it goes on this side of the digital back. So you have like something falling in here, and then you have the, the the crank over here that you have to pull, and it will just be a mess. So what I do is I put it on the other side, on this side on this, and I put it under the the, the camera, under the digital back, and it goes onto this side over here. And it falls in there, and I can still uh, turn it around and stuff. So that it's a that's a very helpful thing. Besides, um, the reason why I, I decided to put it on this on this part over here, it's so I can actually change the lenses because I found myself actually a couple of times where I take out the lens and I put another lens and I try to take a picture or I try to look at it through the lens, and uh, it turns out that the cable was just like flopping on the air and I didn't connect it. Now, um, if you have any questions, please let me know. I, I can make something else to answer a specific question. Um, this trigger is basically just uh, one of those cable release triggers and uh, you can take it out like this. As you can see, it's just a cable. And the cable goes down here and it goes into the camera trigger right here. It, it just gets screwed on like old school cameras. And when you press this, a little um, tube or a pipe will come out from the middle and just just shoot it. All right, this side over here, I have um, uh, an old school uh, joystick. It's a computer joystick from Microsoft. Actually, <laughs> it's a gaming joystick, and uh, I have these buttons up here, and I have uh, other plans that I want to do this. I want to have a uh, something that opens and closes this thing with with this over here, but. I'm still working on the code of uh, and the microchips and all that stuff. I'm not really good at it, so I have, I'm taking a lot of time to do that. And uh, yeah, I can get cables out of here and, and do that more automatically, but I have to work on that. Now, talking a little bit about the digital backs and um, the settings for this digital back is uh, uh, this is a 33 megapixels uh, Mamiya, the the DM33 which would be the Aptus, Leaf Aptus 2. I definitely, um, and this is my personal experience, I, I don't know somebody else, but I definitely recommend to get the Aptus 2 or the uh, the Phase 1, uh, the P+. Uh, the Phase 1s, I'm not really a fan of them because they, do, they, they tend to be more expensive. I know they're more hard and everything, but they tend to be more expensive. Um, and uh, and the screen is smaller and it doesn't have a touch screen and this does uh, does have this does have a touch screen and it's a six by seven centimeters so it's a very big screen and you have a little touch screen now this is nothing compared to an iPhone I mean not even the iPhone the 3GS this is worse than a 3GS iPhone the screen um, and I know there's new versions but uh, they're you know. Twenty, thirty thousand dollars. I don't know. They're really expensive uh, bags, maybe fifteen thousand dollars or something. Uh, and they do have like some nicer screen, but this screen is kind of old school. So you 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 do see like the pixels, and it's like a scene an old LCD over here. It is in colors, and it does help, but the processor is kind of a little bit slow. And uh, the Aptus One, the first I had, I had the twenty-two megapixels before this. In the Aptus one, the screen was just impossible to see. Like you have to look at it really straight. So if you take a photo and you're taking a photo and you just do this and try to figure out, uh, you know, see it from like from a, I don't know, from maybe 45 degree angle and you try to look at it, you can't see the image. You have to actually put the camera almost into your face and look at it straight, so you'll be able to see the image clear. Because if you turn it down a little bit, you start to see like a darker image and. Yeah, that's actually not so cool. Um, but the Aptus 2 has a little bit of a better screen. The Aptus 1, if you go outside, uh, I do a lot of photo shoots outdoors. And when I do the photo shoots outdoors, the Aptus 1, I just, it was impossible to see the screen. Like, I totally cannot see the screen on plain daylight. I will have to, like, cover it or or get like some cloth or something just to cover it like this so I can actually see the image through this because if the sun was brightening out or there was like shining or sky behind me 
and I tried to look at the screen, it would just be a mirror. I could just see myself, you know, it's like blurry reflection of myself, and I couldn't see the actual image, much less check on focus or anything like that. It was pretty, pretty annoying. Uh, if you, if you, this is, if that's the only camera that you can afford, the Aptus One, um, I definitely recommend to get to get something to cover it or get used to working with the, with the histogram. Uh, when I used to use the, that digital bag, I had to use the histogram. I had to see, okay, I'm doing too much dark, I'm doing too much bright. It, it does have an option to show you the histogram over here. So if you see that it's, it's not balanced, it's not like the data is not like on the middle of the histogram. If it's like on, all the way on the dark side or all the way on the bright side, then you know that you're losing some details on the bright side or you're losing some details on the shadows. So you want to have like a nice curve like towards the middle where it's not there's not too much spikes on this side or, or on this side it's like you just have, keep it like right in the middle and uh, that's and that's because it has like a bluish and greenish and like very strong colors even on daylight I, I could barely make it and I can like see what what the photo was kind of looking like so I'm not sure about the focus but at least the exposure I got it right so I had to work like that now this one has a, a pen over here a, kind of stylus pen, it's, it's a heavy little metal stylus pen and it's part of the digital back. Uh, I rarely use it to be honest, like your finger is pretty much enough to, to work with this. Uh, I don't think it needed that but um, I, it, it pretty much works pretty fine, the buttons are pretty big and for the Aptus 2 <coughs> they actually updated the framework, uh, the firmware and so they updated the firmware and they changed the menu and they put in a couple of more settings. There's actually a nighttime and daytime. So I'm gonna try to show you guys what I'm what I'm trying to say all this time. So there's the menu, right? So if you look at it from up, you can see that it loses the the it loses the, the shininess. You see you see it from, from the bottom or you can totally see that reflection of of the of the video camera right there. So imagine that there's a bright sky behind you. You just can't see nothing. It would just be like blurring into your face. But even that, the Aptus 2 is way better than the Aptus 1. So that's the reason why I had to go to the Aptus 2. And um, uh, the only down part of the Aptus 2 that I've seen is that if you connect it to the computer through Firewire, um, you have to have an, an adapter toward the electricity because this thing would require more power than the computer can actually send it. When I had the Aptus 1, the Aptus 1 I could connect to the computer and sometimes, very rarely, it would actually fail me. Um, a lot of times the computer has to have a lot of battery on it, but if it was running like a 50% or 30% the computer, then the Aptus, uh, sometimes the pictures would be like distorted or whatever. So. It was it was working somehow well, but with this the Aptus 2, it seems like it's using more power somehow, and the computer, although it's sometimes able to turn it on, you can take one or two pictures and then it will stop. and And I have a, a new MacBook Pro, so it should be it should be enough. But uh, when I read it, the the manual for the Aptus 2, it does say that you do need the the basically it's like a repeater or a hub. hub uh, for a firewire hop and that's like a two hundred dollar thing and if you're shooting tether is fine but uh, it will mean that you have to have, be connected towards uh, 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 an, uh, an outlet to, to be able to get power so but yeah all along I'm very happy with this thing it's uh, it's it works pretty nice uh, there's obviously a learning curve that you have to do I know some of the guys that were watching my videos are um, the first time that they're getting this type of camera or they're thinking to get one um, it is it is really nice I love it but it's um, and it, it's a learning curve and it's something that you have to get used to it so it's kind of like writing with a pen and then getting a, a fountain pen uh, the fountain pen has a weight that you have to grab it and it has a weight that you have to push and pull and it's 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 more organic instead of just like pushing and, and every line looks the same you have to like basically paint the each letter and then you have to get used your hand again to to start painting like that so it's kind of the same thing with this camera you have to like 
find a way that you can work well with it and then uh, and then keep keep doing that until you pretty much get used to it and it just becomes a, like a second part of your nature the worst thing that you want to do when you're doing a photo shoot is actually thinking about the camera that is that is the worst thing you just, you, you can do the camera should be working it should be on perfect condition and uh, and obviously the more things you add you add a digital bank you add a battery you add cables you you add a lens you add the more things you add you need to uh, also get used to them so um yeah so i hope this answers all the questions that um that i've heard there's the talk about the digital bag there's the talk about the plate I guess one more thing I could mention is that this plate, uh, the one that says R RB67 Pro 2D, uh, this plate over here, it's meant for uh, a type of uh, mount. So it, there's a, a connection on the back, right? So I think there is four or five type of mounts uh, out there with digital backs. Although you get the same digital back and it's, um, uh, let's say, it's a leaf aptus to 33 megapixel not all the leaf aptus to 33 megapixel are the same now here's the thing it only changes on the mounting thing so it has a connector let's say isn't it's a lens for nikon or it's a lens for canon kind of thing it will fit or it will not fit now it's the same lens let's say you have the sigma everything is the same but it's just the connection so there is a connection for the Hasselblad and there's actually two connections for Hasselblad. There's one connection for Hasselblad ages, uh, which are the electric types. They're, um, you know, the, the electronic Hasselblads, they're, they're like kind of goldish color or kind of uh, the new ones that everybody's using. And those are the H, the mounting type H. And then there is the old Hasselblads, the, the ones that you have to crank on the side. And those are called V. I don't know if it's or Victor but it's uh, the UV, the, the, the Victory V. And that's the mounting type B. So if you see a mounting type H or a mounting type B, that means that both of them are for Hasselblads. And you need to either have an adapter with that type of mounting or that camera. Now this adapter has a mounting for M, which is for Mamiya. Now this adapter, it's not, these digital backs are actually not exactly meant for this uh, system it's actually meant for a little Mamiya uh, that is also a medium format but it's it's more like the like the H series of the Hasselblad it's it's more like a like a DSLR kind of thing it's, it's not something that you crank on the side or nothing like that it's something that you hold like you know like a normal camera and you put in your eye and it's just like a DSLR it's like a little bit bigger version and you put this on it so that type of mounting would be the M mount and I guess there is other type of mounts, um, uh, but they don't come to my mind. Those are the biggest ones, the Hasselblads, the Mamiya, so at least the, the ones that I look the most because I, I'm not really interested in any other cameras. Um, the reason why I like this camera, uh, I, I think I mentioned it before, is because the lenses are, are just great. They're huge, and the bigger the lens, the less problems you have with anything. That was the pro thing just turning off. So you have this huge lens, you have, uh, they're really clear, they're very well made. Uh, they say the Hasselblad men's are next to none, um, or second to none, that's what they say. But yeah, I mean, they're second to none, but they're at the same level as this. I cannot notice any very big difference between any Hasselblad photos than, than this thing can make. But um, once you shoot with this system, that is that is a very interesting thing. Once you shoot with this this type of system with a medium format system at least for me it was very hard to get onto the 35 millimeters like you feel like you grab a nice you know those the big Nikon camera and you take a photos and you know you do a little photo shoot maybe you rent it maybe you borrow it or you know someone let you use it and you, you get all the photos from that you look at it on the computer you see how pretty they are and then and then you go back to taking pictures with your little snapshot you know and you feel like there, there's so much more you can get out of the photo shoot um, because you you would have an, a better system, maybe lenses, maybe you can make more creative. You feel like you're you're like restrained into you know using a little point and shoot or even your cell phone. It's, I mean, 
there is a picture is a picture, yes, and the medium is whatever you have in your hand and whatever you want to say, but the quality is is just different. It's, you see a different type of image when you shoot with these lenses and with the other lenses, it's just because optical, it's, it's just physicals of optical physics. And uh, so once I shot with this type of system, I could really be happy shooting with the 35 millimeters, even the full frame and everything that I had. Uh, I was so disappointed every time I see the photo shoots and it, it was pretty painful for me <laughs> to actually see that. Now these things are supposed to be very expensive and I'm going to tell you all the truth. Hasselblad, uh, they are expensive. To start up with uh, the old school Hasselblads, the, the, the ones that you crank on the side, just to start up you need at least a thousand dollars to get a used one and then each lens can cost you like I don't know eight hundred dollars or another thousand dollars or even two thousand dollars for one lenses um, so it gets very pricey very fast I know it, there's a lot of people that likes them but this thing doesn't have anything to, to say against it now Hasselblad the only thing that I will see is that it's smaller and because it's just uh, a 6x6 and the camera is actually not that big and they're not that heavy. I mean, this thing is, it is, it is way heavier than the Hasselblad, especially with all the, the stuff that I added. And if you have like a longer lens, like you know, like a telephoto lens, that will make it really heavy, because they're, they're made out of, uh, you know, metals and stuff. So, uh, but the good thing of this thing is they're not that expensive. Now, a camera body, probably can go for around four hundred, five hundred dollars right now. And uh, the lenses run for maybe $200, $250, $300. $300. And you just need a couple of lenses. That's it. So you get your prime lenses, your your normal, your wide angle, your telephoto. And they're like $250, $300, maybe $150. And you get $400 for the, the body. And it looks amazing. It takes great photos. And you don't need that much for that. The expensive part, of course, everyone thinks about it, is the digital backs. Now, you can go on the internet, at least on this time right now, before, I'm talking about five, six years ago, they was super expensive, there was no way to get one. But right now, I've seen digital backs going for $3,000, going for, you know, two, three, four, and uh, not two, two thousand dollars would be a very cheap one, three thousand dollars still pretty cheap. This one I got for uh, six thousand dollars, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it was not the twenty thousand dollar camera the digital back but i got it for six thousand dollars from hong kong it was used i got it i tested it and it was everything perfect and the guys who own this type of equipment they're usually very careful with them you don't you don't get you know any random joe getting this type of equipment especially if they're getting it new because you know somebody had to pay for it new so whoever gets it really takes good care of it and then it just gets um, depreciated with money on time and then new technologies come out and the guy who really took care of it now wants to get another one and they will get a new one and sell this one for whatever the market is asking for um, so yeah eventually probably I will have to upgrade I would love to get my hands on one of those credos or um, there is the IQ ones which I think they're cool and all but I, I'm more interested in getting the credo for the M mount and uh, so yeah you, you're looking at spending what four or five thousand dollars on the back and then maybe not even a thousand dollars on the on the camera and body so uh, you're looking at what five six thousand dollars with the whole system already and that's pretty much whatever the, the you know the, the Nikon D4 or the, the, the Canon M what is the Mark III whatever um, the most expensive ones of Nikon and Canon and these will give you a way bigger sensor than the Nikons and Canons. Now it's not it's not as easy to use because it's all mechanical but the photos that you can get it's 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 uncompared. Now another thing is obviously the show that you make with these things. Uh, you show up to a photo shoot, you show up to an event or you show up somewhere and you pull out this monster <laughs> and everyone is shooting with this thing. Even professional photographers they're shooting with Nikons or Canons or Nikons or Canons. Some, some of them would Sonny's but you come out and you pull out one of those things and you started to you know shoot it and crank it and you know it's like wow <laughs> it, it is a, it is an impact and you know I don't want to be um, superficial but at least on the yes.
was not shooting. So I don't want to be superficial, but at least on the on the market that I am, on the industry that I am, well, everything's about looks. So it's it's what you're wearing, it's what you're using, it's uh, what you know, it's who you know. Um, so it is it is about who is who has something more interesting to show. Um, it's not about how much money you spend it. It's about how original you are. This is a creative industry, and uh, part of your part of your creativity is also your tools and the way you manage yourself. So, um, yeah, this will be my my rig video. I love it. Uh, I got a lot of this leather stuff. And this is ostrich leather, and I designed all this stuff by myself. Um, they're not difficult to make, and you know, seeing a lot of designers, I get a lot of inspirations. Um, I love the camera of Marcus Klinko. I think he was a, such a great inspiration for for me to design this thing. And uh, yeah, um, I hope you guys like it. And if you guys need to know, uh, want to know anything about this, um, maybe how I'm setting up this thing, or um, uh, any questions that you have, uh, just let me know, and I'll be more than happy to answer them as soon as I can. Alright, so thank you guys. Bye bye.